today I'm going to share how to paint Mississippi cotton fields on a birch panel using water mixable oils. Well, hello, welcome to my channel. If this is the first time that you've been here, my name is Kelly and we purchased a 1900s old pink house that we have been working on and hope to turn it into an inn or a Airbnb in the near future. So this place has tons of art, lots of beautiful frames. Most of them are prints, so they're not worth a whole lot. Um, so I've been repurposing some of those frames and I've been adding some of my own artwork. So today I'm actually gonna share with you how I painted this cute little Mississippi cotton field. So stick around to the end and I'll share what our vintage gold bathroom looks like. Today I'm going to do an oil painting of Mississippi cotton fields and I have my little birch wood panel cradle board already primed and I just went ahead and primed this with GAC 100. I made sure I did a couple coats. I did the front, I did the sides, and I also did the back. Um, and I decided not to do any um, gesso on this for white. I just like the, the deep colors of the blue and I knew I was going to be using some white in here for the cotton and for the little bit of uh, clouds in the sky. So for this one, I'm just basically finger painting and I am using my Windsor Newton water mixable oils, which I absolutely love, which means I don't have to use turpentine uh, or any kind of really strong smelling um, cleaners for this. I just uh, can clean up with water. And especially if I'm just using my glove and my finger, it makes it super easy. I probably will be using some brushes or some palette knives as we get into this. So you can see I'm just, I love to be able to do clouds this way. I'm just using my finger and taking the titanium white and just dragging it across that blue that I just placed down there. I love these little cradle boards too because they have a nice uh, deep edge on them. So I can paint right around the sides on this. It just follows the painting all the way around and there's no frame needed. I also want to recommend, as I'm doing this, I don't want to blend all of that white into the blue. I want to have those streaks. So it looks like the clouds are just kind of very lightly flowing from the left to the right. And uh, so if you mix too much, you can see that you just basically end up with some light blue. So you can see I'm just moving my hands, kind of going different directions, just trying to get a little bit of movement in those clouds and I'm trying to be careful not to give too much pressure so that I mix too much on there. And I'm gonna leave this one sort of chunky, sort of loose and abstract. I'm really into that loose feel or the ab more abstract feel lately. You can see I've got some blue paint down on the bottom. I'm not worried about it, I've got it on the sides. I'm not worried about it, <laughs> just gonna, uh, uh, go ahead and paint that over anyway. So for the blue, I was using ultramarine blue and now I've switched to lemon yellow. And again, I've got green down here, um, blending some of that with the blue, still using my finger. So just being you know, careful not to go too much into the sky area. Again, it doesn't matter because I've got, you can see the picture in the background of my iPad there. I've got lots of trees over there on the right hand side. And I'm trying to make this a little bit brighter. I mean, the day that I took that photograph, it wasn't, it was more overcast. I don't have a lot of, um, a lot of color in there. It's pretty much just blue sky and some green with the little cotton balls that are in there. So we're going to liven it up using a little bit more of those bright colors. So this is the sap green. I'm going to mix that again in with a little bit of that yellow. And you can see I'm just using my fingers, getting a nice, feel. This is so much fun to do because it's um, just very relaxing. That's really fun for me to be able to paint this way. And you can use really any dark green. You can use olive green. I mean, there's lots of different colors in here. I'm also mixing a little bit of bloom with it so it's nice and dark. And you want to make sure that you're doing the sides. I like to do the sides at the same time because I don't have to go ahead and, and mix the colors again. Sometimes as you're mixing, you get um, some really pretty interesting combos. And uh, if you have to match them up again later, it can sometimes be a whole other uh, painting in itself. So do your sides at the same time if you have uh, these wraparound edges. 
and if you've never tried oils before, they are really fun. Uh, as I said, I use the water mixable ones because they're easy for cleanup. And if you're interested, I do have a class on my website at kellychassiefineart.com um, where I walk you through, um, you know, oil painting on canvas. And um, we just kind of go over a few of the rules when you're working with oil paints. So feel free to check that out if you want. I'll put the link down below for you. So I'm continuing just, you know, moving along on the bottom here on the edge, on the edges. Now some of this gets a little, little messed up, a little from my, from my, uh, my easel over here. But, you know, by the time I'm done with it, I usually will set it down on a piece of paper and kind of go around the edges once it's done. But I get most of the color down there. So now that I have that nice little base down there, I'm going to pick up my brush and, and I'm going to start to do a little bit of mixing. I do have my little wax paper over here on the side. That's my little mixing tray. And um, I'm using a round brush. Now, I am really bad. Don't do this. <laughs> really bad at using my watercolor brushes with my oils. Um, and so I usually have like certain ones that I set aside. I like the softness of the brushes. Some people prefer like a really stiff brush when they're working with oils, but I do a lot of softening with mine. So um, I use my watercolor brushes, my older ones usually for this. Now, because it's um, water mixable oils, if I clean these right up afterward with some nice soap, uh, I usually can save these and actually, you're not supposed to do this, but um, I've used them with watercolors afterward, they were absolutely fine. Um, but they recommend, and I recommend that you have your watercolor brushes and your oil brushes, alcohol ink brushes, any kind of medium that you're using um, separate. So that way you don't grab one of your really nice expensive watercolor brushes and ruin them in oil. Okay, so there I did my part. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Oh, my mom used to say it to me all the time. Um, all right, so I've got some little little tapping action. This is a little bit different type of tree. It's not my normal pine trees that I usually do. I have no idea what type of tree this is. Maybe an oak back there? I'm not really sure. But again, it's not exact. I'm just painting away. I'm barely looking at the paint or the picture that I took. I mean, it was just a field, a sky, and I knew it had trees. So that's what I was going with. Now I've grabbed a little bit of the uh, yellow. Again, I'm blending some of that in. This is actually the yellow ochre, so it's a little bit warmer color. That yellow was really pretty. It's very vibrant, but it might be a little too bright. I don't know. I'm kind of you know, thinking about it. I'm also blending some of that yellow ochre in with the green. Again, because I want some different colors in there. I want it to be all the same. So grabbed a little bit more green. I'm going to go up a little bit higher into the sky and blend some of that yellow out, the bright yellow. I might leave a little bit of it in there. Soften it again, bringing some of that light down in, in the bottom. Now, if you've been following me with watercolors, this is oh, it's completely different when you're working with oil. So I'm pretty much going dark to light now. I'm going to have my main colors in, um, but... I will try to put the light colors on top of my darker values. Now with watercolors, you pretty much do the opposite. With the exception of using like bleed proof white or my gouache. So I know I can always put my highlights or my lighter values in with watercolor if I use that as a mixed media. So just keep that in mind. With oil, you're going dark to light. So you can add all your highlights uh, in and layers. So you can see I'm just kind of bringing that little bit of yellow here and there, giving uh, some texture and some highlights to the field a little bit so it's not all one solid color. Remember with, you know, having a few layers of color and some lights and some darks and different values, it really gives your painting so much more depth. So again, I'm adding a little green to that yellow back there so it looks like maybe another layer of trees in the background. Maybe the sun's hitting it so you've got some light on a few of those areas and some shadow on another. You've got clouds in the sky so the sun's not going to hit everywhere. And I'm making it up. I mean, I'm just using that reference photo as a reference. The rest of it is you know, just kind of going with my feel 
No, or do I want some light? Or do I want some dark? I like that look. Let's add more of it. Let's take it away. <laughs> Don't forget your sides. I'm going to put some trees over here. While I have my color on there. And a little bit more yellow ochre. And I'm just dragging it into some of that green again. You can see where you can mix basically right on your panel. Which I love doing. Sometimes you get the best surprises that way. And again, just like with the white, I'm going to try not to overmix because I like having a little bit of those chunks in there. Drama. And don't forget your other side. Now I'm doing this painting all in one session. Uh, I do have a little bit of the linseed oil and they make linseed oil especially for the water mixables. So make sure if you're using the water mixables that you've got the water mixable linseed oil because it is different. Uh, and any paints that are really thick, like I have some paints that might have dried up a little bit, they don't have as much oil in them, I will uh, add a little bit of that linseed in just to make it blend a little bit more. Now the key to oils you always have to remember is fat over lean. So you're going to have your chunkiest stuff, your heaviest, thickest paints uh, on the top. That's why I can usually use a pellet knife at the end and do some chunky stuff, a little bit of texture. You can also create that texture with using the brush. You can see the texture that's got in there as I go a little thicker. Again, taking a little bit of that white that I had on my brush, bringing it down here, kind of coming at it as a little bit of an angle, changing up the uh, shape of that field in the front. And a lot of times I don't even switch brushes or clean my brush off in between. All right, I think I'm going to get ready to load up with some white. Now I'm going pretty chunky here. You can see I've really loaded up with it on my brush. And my brush is really frayed. It's just kind of sticking out everywhere which is what I want because I want to have a little bit of texture as I drop in some of these cotton balls at a distance. Now they're very small back here so I'm doing a light touch with this because I'm just using the very tip of that brush where some of those hairs are gone a little wild and you can see as I come down here in the closer area I'm giving it a little bit more pressure as I'm pushing down. Light taps back here, more pressure in the front so I'm getting bigger, rounder mounds that are, are closer to me. I have to pick it up, make sure I've got all the edges and the sides on the underneath. You can't forget that. And remember, this is up close, so this is going to be pretty good size. Little cotton balls down here. And you'll notice I keep dipping into my white because I don't want all of that to turn green. I want to keep the white pretty bright. And you can see how it's super textured here. I've got chunks of it 
on the side and again that's how you you can keep it really really white and, and bright um, and the texture comes at the very end as I said you can go use that uh, that uh, fat over lean method and that way once the painting starts to dry you've got that top layer that's taking obviously a lot longer than the underneath layer is to dry and then once this is all completed I'm going to let this sit actually for I say for six months before you actually varnish it and I don't particularly care for the really shiny varnish so usually when I seal mine I will seal it with a satin varnish so we're almost done. I'm just blending a little bit more in the sky area using my finger. I forgot to put my glove on. Bad. But I did wash my hands right away. Uh, and I wanted to mention to you guys too, if you would love to see more of my paintings and tutorials, you can support this channel and support me as an artist on my Patreon account where I do exclusive videos just for my patrons. And uh, you can watch YouTube videos ad free. <laughs> So here we have it all finished up. I actually have this hanging in our vintage bathroom downstairs. Now this bathroom is not my favorite color. It's actually painted gold, but it is a traditional color. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. I think I have to do a second painting to go along with this. I do have another birch panel I'm gonna work on. But take a peek, this is our door. These are 14 inch ceilings in this house. Let me turn the light on here for you. We have these glowing, cool kind of candelabra things. This is the main light. Those are the three paintings that I did earlier, but look at that ceiling. I do have to go up there and clean that light fixture, by the way. <laughs> I need a, a different ladder. Can't reach it. We have a very ornate mirror here, and I, as I said, I need some more paintings because this ceiling is so tall. This tiny little painting I hung right here down by the sink. <laughs> and I think if I get another one above it, it'll be cute just right here. But then I need something in behind the toilet area here as well. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.